morning, friends. How's it going today? I am here to share what I ended up getting from the Sephora sale. I know that sale is over, but I still thought it might be interesting just to update you on the new things that I have that I'm going to be trying, and it may just be useful or fun to you in some way. So I am actually wearing a pajama top today. So um, I just thought it was really cute. It's just this little short sleeve top. It came with some super cute uh, PJ shorts to match, but I don't know. It just caught my eye in my closet, and I'm like, I want to wear that today. So I've got my skincare on and everything, and I actually placed um, two small orders in this Sephora sale. Um, I don't know. I was influenced by someone I saw talking about things, and I had to do one other order, but everything I got is in this small basket. So probably the most exciting thing I got was a pump. <laughs> I got an individual pump. I'm all about putting pumps in my things these days. I got a pump for double wear. Now I got a pump for sheer glow. It's benefiting me greatly. It's a much more pleasing experience to wear my NARS Sheer Glow foundation, which I know I've been talking about it a lot lately. I feel like I'm realizing one full pump is it. And I just dab it around. Vienna is my shade. So I've had the foundation for a while. I just decided I need that pump. And when you get the pump, you can twist it. Okay, it's a, it's a locking mechanism there, so it cannot be pushed down because now the cap no longer works for you. That's fascinating, Em. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm going to bounce this in with a beauty blender. I am just loving this foundation. I can't get over it. Like, where have you been? I mean, I've had it in my stash for a while. Granted, I haven't probably used it as long as some people because this foundation has been around for quite a long time, but I just love the um, kind of gently luminous look on the skin, but yet I still feel like I'm getting some decent coverage, maybe not full coverage, but a strong medium coverage, all right? And I just feel like it plays so well with different concealers, just different things on the skin, my skincare that's underneath. It stays looking so nice throughout the day, and you just, can you see, like, the surface of the skin very just naturally skin-like? So yeah, I got a pump for that to make my experience applying even easier, and I can tell you exactly how much I'm using, and I can see for myself how much I'm using, so I don't go and just, you know, when it's just a bottle, and you're just tipping it over and getting some on your finger and dabbing it on, you really lose all um, awareness of how much is actually going on the skin. So I got that, yay, and then I got this concealer, because Emily Gemma, or Emily and Gemma, um, on Instagram was talking about how good this stuff is, this Forever uh, Skin Correct Concealer from Dior. Uh, I have it in 1N. It's a 24-hour full coverage creamy concealer, and she was just saying how she loved it, her mom loved it. It seemed to respond well to different skin types, and I've just worn this once so far. It's got kind of a jumbo doe foot applicator here. So I'm going to get a little bit of this right here on the inner eye, a lighter bit out here, and just use it kind of as all-purpose concealer, okay? I also do a little bit out here. I saw a little tip from Mally where she said to brighten up the face, you go on like right in there. I'm going to put this on with the Beauty Blender and we'll just see what kind of coverage we turn out today. I'm feeling very grateful because I got out of bed this morning and my hip was feeling a whole lot better than it was the last couple days because I injured it uh, running through my neighbor's yard. Uh, long story, not a real interesting story, but um, a package got delivered to my house that didn't belong to me. I know, tragic. And so I took it over to my neighbors and Belle, I didn't think was coming out with me. She was like working on something. And so I said, I'll be right back. I'm going to take this over to John's house. And as I'm coming around the corner from putting it on his porch, I see her running through the street barefoot toward me. I'm like, what the heck? And so I start running toward her, lose my shoe, uh, do something funky on my hip. My left hip, I have hip dysplasia, so I'm like, the, the hip ain't perfectly in there anyway. Um, but I've somehow made it work for 37 years of my life. And not to pat myself on the back, but I'm proud of it. I've been a college cheerleader for four years. I learned how to tumble. Like, I've done a lot of things on that hip. Um, but I, like, came down funny on it upon losing my shoe. And I thought, oh my god, have I really screwed my hip up now? And this was Monday, and so I went through the latter half of Monday feeling really funky on it. Tuesday was not a whole lot better for most of the day. And then I just was like, dear God, please just help help my hip, help it feel better. I know one day I'm probably in for a hip replacement, but just like, let me get through this week, please. I got up out of bed today. 
it feels 100%. I, I am so thankful because that hip's kind of a mysterious thing. It's not quite sitting where a hip should. It might sound crazy to you guys, but I remember uh, being in a doctor's office way back when I was in like, I don't know, fourth or fifth grade, and them saying like, there's a lot of muscle in this area and it's kind of helping hold it in place. The one thing I really can't do is like long distance running because of the impact, but there are a lot of things I can do in the name of staying strong in that area. But anyways, how's the concealer? <laughs> We totally put that on the back burner, didn't we? Um, I feel like it looks great. Um, I'm feeling very much like it's right up there with any of my absolute fullest coverage concealers. It does not feel super duper tacky. I feel like I may have helped like sort of equalize the amount I put on there by using the beauty blender. Like sometimes I think I take away a little excess, but gosh, it looks really smooth. It doesn't look too dry. At the same time, it's not too tacky. All right, I'm pleased with that, but I am gonna wanna set it a little bit, and then I'm gonna wanna probably pay close attention to how that's wearing all day. This Tatcha the Silk Powder. This is a Sephora available item, but I actually got this recently in PR. So I thought, well, let's, let's put it in the same category and talk about it today. Beautiful packaging there. And then there's this little circular thing where I took off this guy, like the stopper was this, and then the powder just kind of sifts out from around there. And I'm gonna be honest, this is not something I'm gonna take the time to put on and take off every day. I just kind of like started shaking the powder like this and some comes out. I also didn't read any sort of instruction that came with this first. <laughs> Small tapered brush from e.l.f. And I'm just gonna gently set, whoop. Set my under eye. How would I describe this powder? This would be day two using this as well. It has a little bit of a, a light slip to it, like some of those HD powders that you touch. I'm just setting the whole T-zone. I don't really feel like I need to set the whole face, but can you see how that like just sort of mattified and perfected a little bit more? I don't think it has to be this powder that you use to get that effect. I think you could use a lot of different powders to do that. But on the topic of Sephora items, I'm using that today. A couple things that got brought up to me, I think was mainly in my undupable video. I was talking about some different cream face formulas and I saw people bring up the Tarte um, Breezy Cream Bronzer and they also have a cream blush. I got seashells in this one and pink sky in this one. The compact style is just slightly different one to the next, but they're very similar. Anyway, um, I've heard some raves about this cream bronzer and some amazing reviews on it. And so I thought figures, I just declare Huda um, Tantour as being so unique. And now there's, there's another thing that's pretty good. So um, I'm using my BK Beauty 106 brush. This is the brush um, that I think Lisa J talks about as being great for family foundation, but it's good for all cream products as well. And I think you're going to see how easily this blends in. I think people just enjoy the ease of this product. Um, to me, it's a little less intense than Tantour. And granted, I have Tantour in the shade light, but that stuff is pretty pigmented. I feel like maybe even a little more pigmented than this which consequently could make it a little more difficult to just throw on. This, I can see the whole throw it on ease. Like I've just been seeing this everywhere, people talking about it. So I wanted to see what the hype was, of course, and I like it. You know, it's cream. It's not adding that additional like cakiness to the skin. And then you touch it and you don't feel like tacky and stuff. And there's no shimmer in this. This is like just a pure color bronzer type deal. As you can see, I'm going to contour with it a bit. I don't think I love the shade quite as much as my light shade in of Tantour from Huda Beauty, but this still it's still workable, still plenty good. I think this came in two different tones. I haven't really self-tanned myself in a little while, and that may be part of it. Sometimes I feel like after I self-tan, all bronzers look a little bit better, even though I need them slightly less. <laughs> so I'm using this even under the jawline, attempting to contour a few of those Cadbury cream eggs away. Hey, I'm proud that the full, you know, Cadbury cream eggs were able to exist in this house until just a few days ago when I killed off the last one. It's an aggressive way of putting it, but when you got kids around all the time, you got to take them down in about two bites or else people will see and they'll start asking. They'll start asking for bites. You got to protect yourself. Every man or woman for his or herself. Okay. There we are with some of that on. Um, I got to say the ease of application was just, just super easy, but the shade is just a little less intense than my other 
kind of front runner product. So let's look at them both. See, a little more depth there. And I feel like a little goes a long way. This one's just a little bit softer, but can be a little more user friendly too, um, just because it's less intense. But this one is incredibly easy to blend. I mean, I just, I, I don't have to build it hardly at all. Like one swipe, one little dab in, and I'm good. So I think I still kind of like Huda better, but that is a good product. I see the hype behind it. Now let's use some of the Pink Sky shade. I think there were three colors of blush, and I went for this one. And I'm gonna use this guy here, which basically equates to the Sephora 56 foundation brush. Dabbing that on the outer part of the apple of my cheek and then just blending in. Yeah, I mean, I, I like that. There are a lot of cream blushes. Like, cream blush is a really hot thing these days. Used to be, like, uh, you'd be hard pressed to find a couple of cream blushes on the market, and now they're all over the place. I don't think it has to be this product. You know, I, I think the e.l.f. putty blushes are great. I'm wondering if I could even dupe this shade within some of what I have there, but like Milani's got those cheek kiss cream blushes also, but this is easy. This is not hard at all to put on. Are you seeing? I'm not even thinking about what I'm doing hardly. I'm just dabbing it. Pretty. Soft shade. The nature of this shade is just very easy. Easy breezy. Do we need more? Of course the answer is yes. Things are just a little more footloose and fancy free when you're going in wearing a PJ shirt. Um, my latter order, all this Dior stuff came in the secondary order. I got this um, Dior Backstage Glow Face Palette. Talk about something that I've eyed for a long, long time and held off on, and I decided now was the time. Now, this shade here, I think I was hoping that, that would be a bit more blushy. I think everything in here is a 100% highlight. You know, it's just, it, it's so glowy. In fact, let's use that one. Let me show you. Got a little bit on my setting brush here. You know, it's got that pinky tone, but it's just not, it's not a blush. Don't think this is gonna be some wild multitasker for you because it's all glowy highlighter type things. I kind of pinked up the cheeks even more with that, but as you can see, quite a bit of glow. Um, let's try this shade here, kind of champagne-y. Is this necessary? Do you need this particular product, this brand? I mean, to me, I haven't been with this one for a long, long time, so give me a little time. But what I'm saying right now is give me that Undone Beauty, like, layered highlighter. Like, you want different tones? This one gives you all different tones, and like the textures are great, and it's every bit as pronounced on the skin as this one, if not more. Also, simply Catrice Sungasm. If you don't really care about having multiple shades, like that one's just fine. But this is pretty. I have a pretty glowy dewiness. There's this white one here that's very icy. Cupid's bow gets that. I haven't used the more bronzy looking one, so what if we just went into that. How dark does it? That one does look a little deeper if it's not catching the light. How about a little of that on the forehead, huh? What do you think about that? Pretty. Okay, I'm gonna use some of my um, Blueberry Milani Replenishing Face Mist because I'm loving this scent so much. Okay, then I'm gonna do my brows with my brow microfilling pen from Benefit. This would also be another Sephora available product, but I didn't get it there. I already had it. Have there been too many just full face get ready with me's for you lately? I'm sorry if you feel overloaded. It just felt like the best way to share this stuff. Like, it wouldn't make sense for me to sit here, put it on, and then not show all that and just start talking about the products. Like, I know that's an old school haul, and those are fun too, but I can share so much more if I put it on and talk about it as I put it on. Oh my gosh, it snowed yesterday, you guys. Like, what the heck? The day started kind of looking like a normal spring-like sunny day, and by the end of the day, we had rain changing to winter mix. Maybe we'll start calling that spring mix in the Midwest, and then snow. Full on big flakes. It was kind of exciting, I will say, but not exciting for the people who have a lot of flowers blooming already. Probably not great for the area orchards, but the good news is though, I think it was it short-lived, not a big accumulation. But we do have the heat turned back on. 
that's for sure. Okay, so just a quick fill in with my fave little product there. And then I will just set that with some gel. This is the Milani Avocado Conditioning Brow Gel. I got two different eyeshadow palettes. Um, filed this one away under, again, something I've eyed for a long time and finally decided to get. Um, it's one of these little Dior backstage palettes, and I thought all of the color families looked so good, but I went with the one called Cool Neutrals, actually. And I just thought this would be slightly more unique for my collection. I know if you're seeing a plum in there, you're thinking, yeah, right. <laughs> um, but overall, you know, it's it's still like, if you just use this palette and this palette alone, you will get a, like a very everyday, cooler looking eye. They had some warmer stuff, but yeah, I got that one. And then I also got from the Huda collection, one of her brown palettes, I got the toffee version. So complete opposite end of the spectrum from the last one I showed you. This one is super duper warm. I have used it, um, I have enjoyed it. The shimmers are very glitzy, especially like that one and that one. The mattes are in the four corners in the center. We've got like mustardy kind of warm shades, burgundy. It's a really nice like warm lovers palette actually. Um, I wanna play with it some more. I'll pop up a look that I have done with it. I really liked it. But today I feel like just with what I'm wearing, this seems to fit a little bit better. It comes with a little eye base or they call it just primer. So let's pop this on. And this is really like neutralizing and brightening. And it feels like it's kind of going cream to powder a bit, which concerns me a little because my Milani eyeshadow primer remains a bit more tacky. So hopefully this can still like work well with the product. Does anybody have any of these little palettes? And if so, what do you think of them? Which one's your favorite? They've certainly been around for a little while. Um, I'm gonna take a crease brush today and I think I'll go up to this corner. Um, there's a little bit of powder kick up when I go into it. Ain't no Hindash palette. How about that thing, by the way? If you haven't seen my last video, I really hope you'll check it out. Um, very innovative product there. The Hindash Butopsy palette, which is basically like the most multitasking thing ever. Really cool. He managed to put in a formula there that worked for both eyes and face effectively. There's that very gently in the crease, like no big deal, super easy. I've got this color right down here the dustiest of lilacs, pulling a little bit more pink as I pop it on. And I'm letting that come up like even higher. I just feel like I see more requests just here and there in the comments. People craving a cool palette, like the warm palettes are just not as hard to find. And so that also made me a bit more inclined to go ahead and try this one, see if it's any good. I'm gonna go to the soft pink over here and I'm kind of highlighting, kind of blending out the edge. Now the darkest shade in here, hmm, we've got a couple of them. This one seems to have a little shimmer. This one looks more matte. Let's try this one. Okay, pretty much what you see is what you get. It's a nice, cool plum, okay? I, for some reason, thought I was gonna need to like build it up or something. I had quite a bit on my brush, but it was plenty, a little was plenty. And it's laying down on that primer really nicely, actually. So super cool, kind of like dark grayish plum. I've used this palette once. I used it yesterday. And I went a little lighter with the look, so I'm trying to make it a bit more dramatic today. But still like super duper blended and soft. A little bit more of that. I think I'll take a little bit of this. Like it's not incredibly light. You saw that work for me in my crease as well. But I'm kind of patting that on my lid for this murky, cool, dusty plum eye. Super pretty. And then maybe some of this shade. It, this has a little bit of like the softest shimmer. And then there's more shimmer in these two. Otherwise everything else seems to be matte putting a little bit of that lightness right around here. Then we're taking small pointed brush, same dark plum, lower lash line, why not? Then let's go just a little lighter. 
I gotta say, I'm enjoying this palette. I'm really liking the look. Go figure, you know, I like plum, but there are so many palettes that I have where the plum is in there, but there's a lot of warmth as well, and the warmth can kind of take over a bit, and not everybody's into that. So here's an example of a little bit cooler way of going about it. I'm gonna try some of this Wet n Wild Breakup Proof Liner, but it's a twist up. I've really enjoyed and actually used up the liquid liner pen. But let's see how this is. Okay, feeling a little dry. I thought we were kind of past the era of real dry eyeliners. I mean, I know it's going over some matte, like a real heavily done eyeshadow look here, but dang, she's struggling. She's like going up the side of a mountain and can't get a foothold. I've got it on, but like... I'm not super impressed by that. What I think I will do is take my darkest shade with a liner brush and kind of like, I don't know what I'm doing here, intensifying, but in the same breath, I'm also softening it a little bit, perfecting the look. Because I feel like I've got like little gaps and this will help. And I do want a bright lower inner rim, so we're doing that. ABH double-ended brow pencil. Sometimes I just think you guys know this little friend just as well as Milani eyeshadow primer. I guess I need to get a new battery because it seems like it's wearing down much quicker than it should these days. But in the name of preserving that a little bit, I'm just gonna do my lashes and I'm gonna come right back. Okay, so I popped on my Kiss So Real Your Lash But Better, My Lash But Better lashes there with this look. I like this palette. I don't think it's super versatile. You're always gonna turn out like a, a dusty plum cool <laughs> look with it, but I like that kind of look, and I think the quality of the shadows was nice. I feel like this one from Huda, you know, totally different color theme here, but in terms of versatility, I feel like this one might be slightly more versatile, um, just because there's a few extremes you can go to in this palette. You know, you work in that yellow, you're operating on a different level from if you're just using, like, say, the brown and the cream and maybe a metallic copper or something, you know? In terms of which of these two palettes am I happier with, I enjoy them both, but I'm kind of leaning a little bit toward that one, but overall, teddy bear, honestly, in terms of recent palette purchases um, outside of Hindash, which is kind of its own little special world. Like, I really, really enjoyed this one, probably above all. I have a full review on it. Um, I just think this is a great little everyday palette. If you enjoy, like, a dusty rose kind of plummy type of eye look, I think that's really what it does best. That was not involved in the haul, just saying. Okay, I got one lipstick. Um, somebody on Instagram was talking about this. This is from Charlotte Tilbury. Um, love the packaging, by the way, always, but it's the shade called Stoned Rose, and it didn't turn out to be quite the shade I thought it would be. I'm not going to keep it on for this look because I just don't think it works with the eye very well, but it looks like this real warm coral, and I thought it looked more dark and like a warm red on Instagram, but you know, people got so many filters going on on their Instagram. What is real anymore? But that's what that looks like. I don't dislike it. I really do think with the right eye look, like a little bit more warmer leaning look, that could be really pretty, like a beautiful spring and summer shade actually, but it's just not gonna be what I wear today with this look, I'm just showing you. Today I think I'm gonna pop on a little bit of White Russian from Buxom. This is a little bit of a pinky lipstick here. Mm, I love that formula. I mean, I would say I like that formula better than Charlotte Tilbury's lipstick formula. A little bit cooling, very smooth, very creamy, yet not incredibly shiny. Love that. Let's take the hair now. Freshly cleaned hair. Should have done some rollers or something in it today. But here's my finished look, my friends. I feel like the moral of my story with this look today is I really like the look, but I think some of this stuff is replaceable, okay? I don't think everything is uniquely super needed. Now, I love getting the pump on the sheer glow. If you love this foundation, the pump is a game changer, worth the six bucks completely. Other things that I've really felt were worth it, I like this uh, Forever Skin Correct Concealer. Like, it looks so fresh even after being set with powder, yet it covered so, so well. Um, I'm gonna continue working with this. This is not like the be all end all review, but like, I really like that concealer. I'm glad I got it. The cream products from Tarte. Um, I, of the two, I would say I like the bronzer a little bit more. That impressed me a little bit more simply because it was so easy and not all cream bronzers are that easy. I think Huda Tantor I like a little better than this, but of these two, 
I like the bronzer and I think the blush is more common, okay? More dupable. I still see myself for sure getting use out of these things. I think they're both pretty. I like them both. I think it's nice when you can keep from applying like powder, powder, powder on the skin repeatedly and work in some steps that are cream. But if it came right down to it in a battle between cream bronzers, I would still take Huda Tantor over this. And that's not just me being stubborn. I just like that tone even more, um, but they're both very easy to apply. Maybe I like that one even more, if we're getting super specific here, maybe I like Huda Tantor even more as a legit like contour. And this is maybe even better as a bronzer, like let's just warm up the skin in large surface areas kind of thing. Why did I just glance at the back of this palette? It says in little print, Toffee Brown Obsessions. I thought it said Toffee Brown Casserole for a second. Like um, that's a casserole I'd eat. But of the palettes I got, that's probably my favorite one that I ended up with. If you're in the market for a cool palette and you really like this everyday plum thing, I like this too. I feel like I should be able to find something that's a lot like this at a lower price point. I don't have it in my mind yet, but maybe I will come up with that. This, while nice, while these textures in here give you a good amount of glow in a lightweight powder texture without big particles of dusty shimmer, and I like that about it, and I do like that you can see differences in all four of these tones. I'm still not thinking that this goes above and beyond some lower cost things that I have. And the biggest one that stands out to me in terms of a highlighter palette is that Undone Beauty thing with the different strips of product that are each totally individually usable. They each make their own statement. You know, I think I would take that over this. To be continued on the Stoned Rose lipstick, I'll try to work that into a look so you can see how that all comes together sometime. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was enjoyable for you watching this haul. I would love to hear what things you got from the Sephora sale, what was a dud, what was amazing. Um, tell me the whole story in the comments section and I will see you guys very soon. I love you. Bye.